Last season, Will Levis got a lot of playing time as a rookie for the Tennessee Titans, despite falling to the second round of the 2023 NFL Draft. Once he stepped on the field, he never relinquished his starting job, and he was able to produce at a fairly high level for a rookie. After one year of solid production without a great supporting cast, people are extremely excited about Levis' potential. However, a closer look at his game and his production reveals that there are more red flags with his profile than most people realize. Today, I'm going to break down Will Levis' rookie season and discuss why I think he has a fairly high ceiling, as well as a really low floor, and why certain stats don't paint the entire picture when it comes to his performance. Last season, Will Levis did not begin the season as the starter for the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill did, but in the middle of the season, Will Levis took over and he became the full-time starter for the rest of the season. As I mentioned earlier, when he did play, he was fairly productive in terms of counting stats. Across 9 games, he completed 58.4% of his passes, averaged around 201 passing yards per game, and threw for 8 touchdowns and 4 interceptions. He had a couple of really good games, like his debut versus the Atlanta Falcons, in which he completed just over 65% of his passes and threw 4 touchdowns and 0 interceptions, as the Titans won 28-23. When looking at Will Levis' numbers from his rookie season, something that pops out to me is the fact that he was fairly efficient for a rookie, especially one who was a second round pick. His efficiency metrics were decent, as he was around average in stats like passer rating and adjusted net yards per pass attempt. If you are familiar with these metrics, these are ways to measure passing efficiency, and passer rating includes yards per pass attempt, completion percentage, touchdown rate, and interception rate, while adjusted net yards per pass attempt improves upon passer rating by also looking at sack rate. Besides his passing efficiency, something else that really impressed me about Will Levis' performance during his rookie season was his aggressiveness, as he was really aggressive as a thrower deep down the field. Last season, he led the league in average depth of target at 11.1 yards, meaning that his average pass attempt traveled 11.1 yards through the air, and he ranked top 5 in big time throw rate. His willingness to push the ball down the field, as well as his ability to generate big time throws at this rate, is really impressive, especially for his age. This, along with the fact that Will Levis had a pretty subpar supporting cast, makes his passing efficiency even more impressive, because the load that he had on his plate was really difficult to deal with, especially for a rookie. Now, if you just watched Levis' highlights and looked at these numbers that we've looked at in this video, you might think that he is well on his way to becoming a very good player for the Titans, especially with the team making a lot of improvements to their roster this offseason. However, there is a lot more to his game than meets the eye, and these stats don't paint the entire picture. Let's dive a bit deeper and take a good look at some of the major red flags in Levis' profile. Let's start with a big question. Why was Will Levis fairly efficient for a rookie last season? If we break down the different components of the efficiency metrics that I mentioned earlier in this video, like passer rating and adjusted net yards per pass attempt, we can answer this question. Looking at yards per pass attempt, completion percentage, touchdown rate, interception rate, and sack rate, you'll see that he was only above average in two areas, and that is yards per pass attempt and interception rate. In fact, he was really good at limiting interceptions last season. Unfortunately, he was well below average in basically every other metric except for yards per pass attempt. Now, some people may see Will Levis' very low interception rate and think, wow, he's a great decision maker. However, I think this is actually one of his biggest weaknesses as a passer, and let me tell you why. Last season, Levis ranked bottom 5 in turnover-worthy play rate, and he had 3 more turnover-worthy plays than actual turnovers. This stat from PFF includes interceptable throws and fumbles, and Levis had 7 fumbles which may be driving this poor mark. However, if we do some quick math with his 7 turnover worthy plays versus his 14 actual turnovers, we'll see that he had 3 more interceptable balls than actual interceptions. And if he had 3 more interceptions last season, his interception rate would have gone from being top 10 to bottom 5. 
The fact is, Will Levis needs to do a better job of protecting the football moving forward, whether it be through improving his decision making or improving his ball security. This isn't his only issue though, as he also struggles a lot with accuracy. Last season, he was bottom 5 in both on-target throw rate and adjusted completion percentage. And if you don't know what adjusted completion percentage is, that is completion percentage adjusted for drops. You might be thinking, hey, what if you take into account how often he was pressured or how deep he was throwing the ball? That stuff matters when looking at accuracy. And I agree. The problem is, Levis was subpar in terms of accuracy in pretty much every area, no matter how deep he was throwing or whether or not he faced pressure. He simply isn't an accurate passer. Speaking of pressure, this is the one last area of concern that I wanted to hit on with Will Levis because he is really, really bad at handling pressure. Last season, Levis struggled mightily when the pocket was muddy, putting up poor production across the board in these situations, whether you look at PFF grade, yards per pass attempt, or passer rating. His accuracy and decision making were quite poor under pressure, but I want to focus on his sack avoidance for a second. Last season, he took a sack on 21.5% of his pressure to dropbacks, which was well below average. This was an issue for him in college, and this continued during his first NFL season. Before we move on, I do want to touch on something that I mentioned earlier, and that is the situation Will Levis was playing in, because this is important context that you have to take into consideration. The fact is, Will Levis' situation last season wasn't great. His offensive line was really bad, and he was asked to throw the ball deep a lot, and that's a lot to put on a rookie quarterback's plate. It's hard for rookie quarterbacks to succeed when they're dealing with stuff like this, so I don't want to be too harsh when I talk about Will Levis' weaknesses. Still, it's impossible to ignore just how bad some of Will Levis' numbers were last season, and I don't think that we can just sweep this under the rug. So, what should we expect from Will Levis moving forward? Although I have mostly been negative in this video, I do think that there are reasons to be intrigued by his skill set. His arm talent is awesome, and he has serious mobility, even though he didn't use his legs much as a rookie. This gives him some level of upside that's tantalizing. Whether or not he reaches his ceiling is a different story, though. I won't sugarcoat my thoughts about Will Levis. He has serious flaws that will keep him from being a starter in the NFL if they don't get fixed. His accuracy, decision making, and sack avoidance are really poor for a quarterback who will be 25 next season, and I need to see him take a big step forward for me to believe he will be a long-term starter. Perhaps that will happen with the Titans adding Calvin Ridley, Tony Pollard, and J.C. Latham to their offense this offseason. Even if you disagree with my opinion on Will Levis, I hope that in this video you at least learn that while efficiency metrics are good and useful, they don't always tell the whole story and you have to dive a bit deeper. In the case of Will Levis, I think his efficiency metrics vastly overestimated how well he was playing during his rookie season, and I think that they will probably regress next season, even if his supporting cast performs at a higher level. Even though I am definitely a skeptic, I can't wait to watch Levis play next season, and I hope he takes a big step forward in his development, because he is extremely talented, and he seems like a cool guy. Hopefully he becomes a star, and makes me look like an absolute idiot.